say that it feels right What the fuck? Okay, Callum, it's time to go. I want off. Okay. Yeah. Fuck you. Callum! Where'd you go, you little shit? We gotta get out of here. What's whispering to me? Hansel and Gretel. I used to read it to Callum when the electricity was shut off. Those poor children. The whole world against them. The forest. The birds. The old witch. Even their own parents. I used to imagine that Callum and I were the kids in that story. Not mother and son, but brother and sister, hand in hand against the unkind world. We were always hungry, looking for our own house made of candy, looking for the sweetness that could take the pain away. Hunger leads people to desperate, terrible places where the tree branches reach like claws. Yeah. Hence the cannibalism. Callum. Tell mommy where you are. This kid's probably dead already. <laughs> really? I'm gonna end you when I find you. Callum? More than likely won't be finding you tonight. Did you say something like another accident? This place. Getting the vibe that bad things are nearby when my eyeballs are vibrating. Oh, that's blood. I don't. Freddy Faze Bear. I can't read that. Is there a zoom? No zoom. Despite the constant interruptions to work, Atomic our Atlantic Island Park will be opening on time. The governor is booked to cut the ribbon, so the only real question is whether or not ha we have any customers. I'm not truly worried. The customers will come out of simple curiosity. I deduce what was needed from the two banned writings of Archie Henderson's fours, astonishing to think that a response of positive Emotions can be used to fuel such a process Henderson himself chose to use negative and that caused some of the taint that still lingers in this place I will not make his mistakes very soon. I Will know of this has been for nothing Okay I I'm done looking at this Don't hide from me Callum I'm following the trail, creepy, whispering voice. Callum! I don't enjoy following Callum, the trail stay in particular. Where you are. Rocks. I need you to not do that. Go back to fighting Stone Cold. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. Mother Duck said quack, quack. That's not what the fuck I said. I think you might be stupid. I'm gonna take you back and get another kid that's not broken. God, that's a horrible thing to say. Come out, sweetie. I'm coming. Oh, what is this? Callum, where are you? This way, mommy. Callum, where did you go? <laughs> I'm gonna. Beat you so hard, child. I like seeing the Ferris wheel moving in the background. That's cool. Come back, Callum. Uh, I 
if I get on this ride, I'm more than likely am going to shit bricks instead of catching you. This Where... whole thing used to make the blood run to my head. It used to make me dizzy. What's the front of it? What is its face? I can't really tell. Is it some kind of chicken with tentacles? That makes sense. The guy just snapped. Those poor kids. Okay, I'm gonna try to read this. This one's a little bit better written. We were waiting for our turn on the ride. Frank, me, and the boys. This fellow in the chipmunk suit is making an ice carving while people took photographs. Lawrence wanted to go over to him, but I've always been a bit wary of those suits. They give me the creeps. It's silly, I know. Anyway, the chipmunk man, he was carving, I carving and picking away at the ice. And at first we thought he was making some animal, like a tiger or lion. But as more and more ice fell away, when you first looked, it was like a human face, smiling out of the block of ice. But the more you looked at it, the more you saw that it was something not quite right about the proportions. Something unnatural that made your heart begin to beat just a little bit faster. Like you were prey, and that thing in the ice was a hunter. But then these teenagers walked up, and one of them made a face at the carving, and said something rude to the guy in the chipmunk suit, and then... Well, he went berserk. For a few moments, it was chaos. Everybody was running away from the guy, who had one of the teenagers on the ground, and he was stab, stab, stabbing him with the ice pick, and blood was spraying on the people, were screaming, and Frank and I had the kids, and we were dragging them away as fast as we could. And the last thing I saw before Frank dragged me away was the eyeball of one of those poor kids had landed on the eye sculpture, making the horrible creature look more or less alive. Fun times! Can I have this lantern? I need that for a light. No, that makes too much sense, doesn't it? Okay. Come to mommy, Callum. Mom. No, I really can't. I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna be riding this. I think I'm walking around it. Where are you? Well, you're clearly not in distance for me to see. Mommy needs to see you, Callum. I wonder why my voice bellows out like that. Can I get on this? Read Octotron. I can't get on while it's moving. Oh, I'm gonna shut this bitch off. Here we go. Oh, it's still moving. Okay, so I'll decrease it more. Are you stopping? There should just be like a stop button for it. Surely I should get on like that. I mean, it's going negative two miles an hour. I want to ride it. Damn it. What the hell? I mean, unless the entrance is over there. I, I mean, I thought it would be right there where, you know. Who's talking? Come out, sweetie. I feel like I did a loop-de-loop. -loop. Callum, where'd you go? Yeah, I, I have to ride it, I'm assuming. But it wasn't letting me on right there. I mean, I'll try it again. Huh, 12 minutes. I figured it'd have more jump scares than me not lacking water. Nope, I can't get on. I'm... What the hell? It's all the way off. Do I go this way? Because I assume... Yeah. Wait, what are you? Oh, I remember this. I don't. 
Your son's like, Mom, we have got to take you to J.C. Penney's or Sierra somewhere. Those pants are just awful, and they don't match your stupid clubbing goth leather jacket either. Callum, stay where you are! I think this is his trail. Treachery hides yeah. in thoughts. Treachery that lashes like a whip and scars our insides. The first time I saw Callum, my thoughts betrayed me. I looked down at this wrinkled, red, bawling thing and I thought, is that it? <laughs> we build our world from expectations, and the world that I had built for Callum was no different. He was so real, so there, and so far from my expectations. What was that? Shattered. And as they fell in pieces, that one treacherous thought became a new foundation. I'm not going in all there. All of the love that we shared, all of the warmth and nope. goodness that followed, built on a single traitorous thought. I smell a jump scare. Uh, but working the park for a, for a summer would be a lot of fun, but the end of season here really drags. There aren't that many tourists around, and so most of the staff spend their day standing around gossiping, and most of that gossip is about Chad. I seen, is it? I mean, I mean Steve. See, even I am starting to call him Chad, and I went to school with the guy. It's that goddamned suit. In the beginning, it was a laugh. Steve, the local lush, as Chad, the chipmunk. Child-friendly mascot at the Atlantic Island Park. Lock up your daughters and all of that. But the more he wears that suit, the weirder Steve is getting. At first, it was the little things, like refusing to change out of the suit at work and taking it home with him every day. Then I saw him at Susie's Diner, still wearing it. It wasn't even a work day. Some of the staff complained, discreetly, to park management about the smell, and I saw him walking and talking with Mr. Winter, the owner, one day, but nothing seems to have changed. Suit still smells like a carcass whenever Steve walks by, and apparently Steve has picked up some new skills since the last time. I saw him puking up in the gutter outside the silicone station, because he sure as hell can carve a mean knife sculpture. Those shapes he makes in the ice, though, they give me the creeps. Steve came by the booth today, lucky me. And he just hung around for a while. Couldn't really tell because of the suit. But it seemed like he was just staring at me. Sizing me up. I fucking me. Whatever he was doing. I asked him what he wanted. And he just stood there. Not saying anything. Eventually I called my supervisor. And when he came by. Chad. Steve. Wandered off. My supervisor told me to put everything in writing. So here it is. Also I quit. I don't want to see that stupid chipmunk suit ever again, Laura Hedman. I'm going back away, and there's going to be a jump scare. Not playing anymore, God, knew it. Okay, bye, bye, bye. Whew. What's that sound? Okay. I want my eyeballs to stop vibrating. Okay. Whew. What the hell was that? Wait, Callum. Mother duck said quack 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 quack. Whew, my heart. And I knew that was coming. What time we got? Oh, we only got a few more minutes. Damn, I wanted to show a little bit more. I do have to work in the morning too, so I do need Constant to stop at twelve like a plan. Music. Guess it floats someone's boat. Hey, some 80s music ain't that bad. Where are you? Hey, watch yourself before you wreck yourself. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? What the hell? Huh? 
My balls are vibrating. Hello? Um. Cool. The trail goes this way. Great. Come back. <laughs> I'm gonna kick you in your tiny, underdeveloped penis. Hello. That's how kids punish parents. Punish their kids, right? Callum, where are you? Oh, kid, why are you doing this? Callum, stay where you are. I don't want to read the accident report. Oh, okay. Hold on. Poi's name, Francis Dufre Dufresne. Guess it's French. Time and day of the accident. 25th of October, 1976. Job titles and departments. Laborers working on the crane. Oh, this is going to be unpleasant. Supervisor, lead person, Richard Stapleton. Witnesses, Lawrence Creed, Michael Edgeworth. He's a lawyer. Brief description of the accident or incident. During transport of the bumper cars into the arena, one of the straps attached, attaching the load to the truck came untied, causing a cascade of bumper cars onto Francis, who was standing directly, was standing directing the driver. Francis was crushed by the weight of the cars. Describe any injuries caused. Francis was killed. Did the injured employee see a doctor? <laughs> yeah. Sort of. I mean, it may have been whether or not he was alive or not, but there was a doctor nearby. His body at some point. If yes, did you file an employer's portion of a worker's compensation form? Yes. Supervisor's comments. Dexter, the truck driver. Oh no, he gave up being a lumberjack. Claims to have seen someone on the back of the load. Undoing the straps. Nobody else reported seeing that. The sheriff has requested that Dexter provide them with urine samples. What could have been done to prevent this accident? Double checking the straps after transit should be mandatory and drug screenings for all drivers. Have the unsafe conditions been corrected? No. Additional comments. The local laborers are very superstitious and this has happened. This hasn't hap helped. Excuse me. Some of them are refusing to return to work until we have someone from the local church walk the part and exercise the bad spirits. Probably not a terrible idea. Yeah. What's happening? Okay. Is something bad gonna happen every time I read? Because that goes against what I was taught in school. I was taught it was a good thing. I want out of here. Stay where you are. I love that you can tell how freaked out she's getting. I can't go that way. What was that? A crying baby? Did this not open up something when it crashed? I'm assuming it did. Mommy's coming, Callum. Yep, right here. I hear a robot. Oh, I got three minutes. I'll try to see if I get scared again before we have to end it. Oh, man. This is not a pleasant feeling. It's a matter, it's a matter of, public of public record that I am a failure as a mother. Once, when Callum was very small, I left him asleep in the car while I ran an errand. Don't even remember what it was. When I came back, the sheriff was standing next to the car, watching my boy through the window. I didn't like what I saw in his eyes. Judgment. He wrote me the ticket without saying a word. Just the scratch scratch of his pen on the notepad. When he gave it to me, our eyes met. I know what you're going through. My daughter, Helen, she... Just get some help. Help was a bolt of lightning. Help was a thousand volts surging through my veins. Help is agony. I'd rather die. I wanted to scream. I'd rather you pulled your gun and shot me. 
but instead my mouth said, yes, Sheriff. My kid's dead. Why am I here? Hmm. I guess we'll find out next time. That is the conclusion of the first night of 31 Nights of Live Screams. I thank all of y'all for joining me. I need to take myself to bed. I am going to be streaming more this month. I will stream more horror games, God help me. And, um, we'll aim to a better goal to make CGN more publicly known throughout. But thank you for joining me tonight. It was, it's been fun and it's been real. And we'll do it again soon. You guys are great. It's okay.